here so you know how it works. The goal is to get to the king spot, which is in the middle, and then you want to stay there as long as you can. And I feel like whenever you get to the king spot, and if you get there, that's when the game is really just getting started. Because now everyone is just looking at you, right? Their whole goal is just to get you out. It's practically one on eight. And when I think of nine square, I immediately think of the last time that I ever played. And it was at a merge event a few years ago. And this was the merge event when my younger brother was coming up as a freshman. So now I was moving up as a senior. And there were a lot of really athletic freshmen that were coming in. So I was honestly a little bit nervous because I didn't want to get embarrassed. But we're playing nine square, and I end up making my way to the king spot. And I look around, and again, I get really nervous because there's a lot of younger guys, and I know they're going to be coming at me as an older person wanting to get me out. And I look right next to me at the spot next to the king spot, and my little brother's standing there. And immediately in my head, I'm thinking two things. One, don't let him get you out, because I know he's never going to let it go, and he's never beat me in anything, so I don't want this to be the first time. And then the second thing is that I have everything to lose here because I don't want to get embarrassed by my little brother and a freshman. So I'm thinking, just don't let him get you out. And so I serve it. It gets hit around a little bit, and now it's up in between the pole between mine and his square, and we both jump. And I kid you not, I have, I've never seen him jump like this before. Like, he's a golfer, so he's not really an athlete, but <laughs> <laughs> he, he jumps so high, and he... He ended up getting me out, but the worst part about it was he hit it so hard, it hit my head, and then I ended up, like, falling down. And so it was in that moment that I decided to officially retire from the game of nine square, and I've never played again. For, you, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Spencer. I'm super excited to be here tonight to share the message with you guys. Tonight, we're going to continue the share series. We're going to continue talking about our faith. So far, we've talked about taking the opportunities in front of us to share our faith, as well as sharing our faith despite the differences we might have with the people around us. Tonight, we're going to focus on what it looks like to share our faith even when we're facing opposition. I'm excited for tonight because I feel like as a teenager, one of the things that I'm most worried about when it comes to sharing my faith is what to do or what to say if I face opposition or if I face pushback. Like, how do I respond in that moment? What do I do? And so taking this idea, we're going to look at a snippet of the life of a guy named Stephen. Stephen was a leader and a teacher, and he was one of the seven men chosen to distribute the food in the early church. And while doing this, a group of pe people made up some lies about Stephen and had him arrested. So if you will, go ahead and get your Bible apps out and find Acts chapter 6. We're going to read verses 8 through 15. It says, Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the province of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could not stand up against the wisdom of, that the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, We have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witness who testified, This fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs. Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. So as you can see, Stephen is already facing a lot of opposition. This group of Jews made up some lies about him that they knew would cause problems with the Jewish high council. They didn't want Christianity to advance, so they were doing this to try to stop the spread of the gospel. The first thing that I want you to see tonight, and these are all going to be really practical things, but the first thing I want you to see is that we have to stand our ground. Now I'm going to read Acts 7, verses 1 and 2. It says, Then the high priest asked Stephen, Are these accusations true? This was Stephen's reply. Brothers and fathers, listen to me. Our glorious God appeared to our ancestor Abraham in Mesopotamia before he settled in Haran. At this point in Stephen's life, his back is up against a wall, big time. He had just been accused and arrested for blasphemy. And back in this time, the penalty for blasphemy was death, and it was by stoning. So Stephen knew what was coming his way. 
Even though Stephen was in a tough situation where it seemed like everything was stacked against him, he did not back down. He stood his ground and he took a chance and he shared with everyone there about the unfailing love and faithfulness of God. Even when, in, when he was in front of the high priest, he did not back down. How many of you guys remember the childhood game Red Rover? So this was a game that I loved to play with my siblings and some of our family friends growing up. Uh, basically, you have two teams, and they line up across from each other about five to ten yards away. And with your team, you grab their hands and you kind of spread out. And basically, one team is going to call out a player from the other team. So I'll say, like, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Amara right over. And so Amara starts running, and her goal is to try to break through our hands. If she breaks through, then she gets to go back with her team. If not, then she now joins my team. This was a super fun game, uh, but it was also really dangerous, and I'm not sure why we were allowed to play it, because it seemed like someone got hurt every time we played. Um, but the whole point of the game was to see who would stand their ground and not move when someone was running right at them. And this is the same attitude that we have to have when it comes to sharing our faith. We can't back down no matter the size of the opposition in front of us. With Stephen, he was asked a simple question. The high priest asked him, are these accusations true? And in this moment, Stephen had a huge decision based on how he wanted to answer this question. He decided to take the hard road, and he chose to stand his ground by using this opportunity to share his faith, knowing that this was not going to be a very popular decision. Stephen chose to stand his ground and not back down, even though seemingly everyone around him was against him. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14, Paul says this to the people of Corinth as a part of his final instructions for them before he leaves. He says, Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, and do everything with love. In this moment, Stephen was able to be strong and courageous because of his faith. He knew he had the truth, and he knew no matter what kind of opposition came his way, he was going to stand his ground, he was going to stay firm in his faith, and he was not going to back down. The second thing that I want us to see from Stephen's story is that we have to focus on sharing our faith. And you're probably thinking, well, duh, this whole series is share, and it's about sharing our faith, so obviously I'm going to focus on sharing my faith. But I want you to realize is that Stephen could have said a lot of different things in this situation. If we go back to the only question that he was asked, he was asked, are these accusations true? And I know for most of us, this is the point where we would just unwind and let loose, right? Just imagine your siblings are accusing you of something that you didn't do, and now your parents finally come in the room, and they're like, did this actually happen? And I know, at least for me, this is when I'm like, no, it didn't happen, here's what happened. I'm pointing my fingers, making sure they know the truth. And you would only expect Stephen to do this in this situation, because one, he's being wrongfully accused, but two, his life is on the line. But he didn't. He didn't defend himself at all. Instead, he completely focused on sharing his faith. And we won't read this, but for the rest of Acts chapter 7, Stephen goes on to share the gospel with the people around him. When we're sharing our faith while facing opposition, this is huge, because there are going to be times when we have to make the decision to continue to talk about our faith and not get involved in different debates or arguments. And I know this is tough for anyone, but I feel like this is especially true for teenagers because, let's be honest, we love to have debates, we love to get in arguments, and we love to make sure that everyone else knows that we're right. And I know this is true because I myself love to get in these debates, I love to make sure people know I'm right, but I try to not do that unless I'm, one, explaining why Friends is the best TV show, two, I'm explaining why water is indeed wet, or three, I'm explaining why the earth is actually flat. But, but the point is that when we're sharing our faith while facing opposition, we have to follow the example of Stephen and focus solely on sharing our faith. Stephen was being wrongfully accused of something, so I can only imagine what was going through his head, what he could have possibly said in this moment. But he recognized that the most important thing to say, the most important thing to do was to share his faith, to share about the faithfulness and the love of God. So when you have a chance to share your faith, Focus on what God has done in your life. Yes, people are going to have these deep theological questions, and that's okay. But it's also okay to not know everything about everything. But share how God has changed your life. Share how your life is different because of your relationship with Jesus. 
Focus on being personal and not just defending your faith or defending yourself. There's a time and place for that, but the first thing is to share about your own faith. The third thing that I want us to see is that we have to share our faith no matter the outcome. Stephen had to have known what was coming his way, and by choosing to share his faith, he basically solidified his faith. The thing we have to realize and understand is that his faith had changed him and influenced him in such a huge way that he was not going to let anything stop him from sharing his faith, not even death. If we look forward to the end of Stephen's story in Acts 7, verse 54, it says, The Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusation, and they shook their fists at him in rage. So this is when Stephen just gets done sharing the gospel with all these people, and basically everyone's heated. They're really fired up. And this probably wasn't the outcome that Stephen was looking for, but it's what he got. And sometimes that's just how it's going to be. If we look in the book of Acts, there's so many examples when the gospel is shared, and sometimes we get opposition, but sometimes there's salvation. We are just called to share no matter the outcome. We cannot let anything stand in our way of sharing our faith with people. And by choosing to answer the high priest's question the way that he did, Stephen basically dug himself his own grave. I'm only a little over a year from being in these seats with you guys, so I know what's going through your head. I know what you're thinking. And honestly, I'm still going through all this, even on a college campus. But I think how my perspective has, my perspective has changed as I've gotten a little bit older is recognizing what the gospel has done in my life and how it's changed me. Just taking a step back and realizing that the King of Kings left his spot in heaven to come down to earth and take my place on the cross. Knowing that I was still going to sin against him, I was still going to disown him with my actions, but it didn't matter because he loved me that much, he was willing to come down and take my place on the cross. And then as I got older and I went through these big decisions, I went through different trials and hardships, seeing how God has remained faithful to me, seeing his love and his grace and his mercy continue to pour out over my life, when I think about that, there should be nothing that stops me from sharing that truth with other people. Because I know the power that it has. I know that that truth can bring hope and life and transformation into someone's life just like it did in my life. I truly believe that when the gospel has changed who we are, there will be nothing that stops us from telling other people about it. When the gospel has captivated our soul, when it's changed us to the core, there will be nothing that stops us from telling other people about Jesus. Stephen's faith had shaped him, molded him, and changed him in such a way that he was not going to let anything stop him from telling other people about it. And he was willing to take whatever came his way because he knew it didn't compare to what he would eventually have and was only temporary. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is in John chapter 16, and it's verse 33. And Jesus says, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. What might come Stephen's way, the possible persecution that he would face by him taking a step out and sharing his faith, did not compare to the hope in life that could be brought into the lives of so many people by him simply sharing his faith. This was a risk he was willing to take, and he was not going to let anything stop him. And that's the risk that we all have to be willing to take when we share our faith, even amid opposition. But we have to do it no matter what the outcome might be, because it's just that important. Lastly, the fourth thing I want us to see is that in the end, we have to leave the outcome to God. If we look at Acts chapter 7, verses 55 through 60, it says, But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, Look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. Stephen stayed true to his faith and his convictions even to his final breath. He had been shaped and molded in such a huge way that while he was dying, he spoke similar words to that of Jesus, and he said, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. He did not let the outcome change who he was or what he believed in. 
The outcome is not your responsibility, and ultimately, it isn't up to you. Our job as believers is not to change people or change people's hearts. And oftentimes, I feel like we can feel like it's our job or our responsibility to make that person believe or to change that person. The truth is that our job is solely to share our faith, to share our testimony, to share our experiences, to share how God has showed up in our life and how he's worked in our life. Nothing more. We don't hold the power nor the burden of trying to change people. That's in God's hands. But we do hold the responsibility of sharing. So no matter what happens when we try to share our faith with people, whether it's rejection, betrayal, mockery, whatever it is, we have to make sure we keep our own faith. Stephen was the first martyr for Christianity. That means he was the first person to die for his belief in Jesus as the Christ. His story marked the beginning of great persecution for the church. And if you just go over to the next chapter, in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, you'll see that on that day that Stephen died, persecution broke out against the church, and Christians started to flee from their homes. But it is through the persecution that the gospel was spread and advanced outside of Jerusalem and into the rest of the world. You could say that although Stephen's life was ended, the sharing of the gospel began on that day for everyone else. So what's this all mean for you? I know you're not sitting here thinking that you'd like to be in a similar situation as Stephen and have a bunch of rocks thrown at you because you decide to share your faith. But I think sometimes the thing that stops us from sharing our faith is the opposition that we could face. We don't like confrontation. We don't like people to disagree with us and try to prove us wrong. We don't like to be at odds with people. Maybe we just don't like to be uncomfortable. But each of us have to get to a place in our faith where we care so deeply about people knowing Jesus that it doesn't matter who or what the opposition is, we are going to make Jesus known. So here's my question. How much do you care about other people knowing Jesus? I want you to go ahead and think about your answer to that question. On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you care about other people knowing Jesus? How much would you be willing to risk for people to know Jesus? Because ultimately, this is what it comes down to. There's a certain point that your answer to this question is going to determine whether you'll be willing to face opposition or not. But here's the best part about this. If we all just move ourselves down this scale a little bit, and we'd be willing to risk things for other people to know Jesus, if we're willing to risk our popularity, risk our perception, risk money, risk relationships, risk everything for people to know Jesus, if we did this, we would change the world. I truly believe that when you lay it all down like Stephen did, you can change the world. You can make that type of difference. If we truly make efforts to share our faith, then we're going to face opposition. It's just part of it. But I hope tonight you're encouraged in those moments to stand firm in your faith and share about your own personal faith and experiences with God. Ultimately, leaving the end result out of your hands. And doing this because we realize that there is nothing more important that we could ever do than making Jesus known.